I'm Mark Matusik. Uh, I'm an author, a teacher, and a mentor. Uh, and the work I do with students and the books I write are all about truth, story, and transformation. I've always been a writer. I've been writing since I was a kid. I started keeping a journal when I was about eight. I grew up in a house where there was a lot of danger and loss and confusion. So uh, writing is where I was able to make sense of my experience and also be a witness to the stories that were happening around me. A lot of writers start out that way, as witnesses. After I finished my master's, I moved to New York, worked for a while at Newsweek magazine, then I worked as a senior editor at Andy Warhol's Interview magazine. But what I loved about being a reporter was being able to ask people very personal questions. Uh, and get them to say things they might not otherwise admit. Well, it was 1984. Uh, I was working at Interview, and the people around me started getting sick and dying. Uh, and I was afraid for my own life. Uh, and I fled. I quit my job and spent the next 10 years as a, as a Dharma bum. Uh, and when I came back, I wanted to describe that experience of leaving the fast track to go on a spiritual uh, quest. Uh, and that became my first book, which was Sex, Death, Enlightenment. I wanted to write a, a spiritual book for worldly people. It was actually one of the first memoirs of its kind, trying to describe how we take spiritual lessons and bring them into everyday life as ordinary people in the world. My next book was called The Boy He Left Behind. When in my late 30s, uh, someone dared me to look for my father, who had disappeared when I was four. Uh, and that journey actually changed my life profoundly. You know, Freud said that until your father dies, you don't actually become a man. And there was a part of me that hadn't grown up because I didn't know what happened to my father. And so it was a very important search for me. I love working with people. I spend about half my time now working with students, uh, helping them look into the questions and the stories that they ask and tell themselves uh, and what, what they're not being honest about. You know, when you tell the truth, your story changes. And when your story changes, your life is transformed. When students start being honest with themselves about who they are uh, and what they want and what they believe, uh, they come to life. Uh, there's nothing like seeing the light bulb go off in someone's eyes and having them learn to see themselves in a very different way and tell their story in, in a very different way. My teaching has grown organically out of my own life experience. I wanted to share some of the things, the mistakes that I had made and the things that I had learned by you know, hard sort of trial and error with other people. Uh, and st also students started to come to me looking for advice. So it wasn't something that I planned. It grew very organically out of my experience. My classes are not just for writers. And I tend to focus more on becoming the person who can do the writing as opposed to focusing on technique uh, and literary perfection. Well, I use self-inquiry and direct questioning and life writing to help students look at the fake stories that they've been telling themselves, which helps them access a deeper level of creativity uh, and the original genius that they may have lost or sacrificed in the name of conformity in their lives. Well, one of the ways that we limit ourselves is by telling ourselves, I'm the kind of person who does this or does that. And that's why crisis is so great, because it shakes us out of that container. And we have to say, well, maybe I'm not that person. Maybe I'm someone who's capable of that. Or maybe I actually dream of this or have that passion. I form very deep bonds with my students. Uh, there's a kind of intimacy happens when you ask people to go into their dark places and tell their secrets. I think of myself as a spiritual friend to my students. There's something in Sufism called Sohbet, which is the spiritual talk of friends. And that's how I think of the teaching that I do. People are surprisingly open in online classes. You can sometimes be more candid with someone you've never met than you can with your best friend. It's sort of like telling a story to a stranger at a bar that you know you're never going to see again. People are much more truthful uh, when they don't feel the pressure of someone in their immediate life knowing what they're talking about. So very deep bonds form in these online classes to the point where they will fly to the same city to be together and meet one another. There's something that happens when you're willing to tell the truth that bonds you. Uh, and people have formed very deep friendships uh, through these classes. Well, I teach different kinds of classes. I teach uh, six-week on-site classes. I teach six-week online classes. Uh, I teach workshops, uh, weekend and five-day workshops in the United States and Europe. And I also mentor people one-on-one -on -one who need help with either the writing process, a spiritual process, or a particular project that they're working on. If you're willing to do the work, and if you're willing to 
follow the questions as deeply as they're intended to go. You will be changed uh, by one of these courses and you'll see yourself in a different way by the end.